All right, in this video, we're gonna talk about setting up the X32, the assign button section, because the assign button section has to be programmed in order for this, uh, for my template to work. This is the only part of the um, programming that you need to do. Now, we're gonna program this inside of your Behringer X32 or your compact or your producer. And as you see on the screen, I have the section that we're going to be working on. We're going to be working on the four uh, rotary knobs, the eight buttons and the pad editor. So to get started, even before you load the template, you want to click on the pad editor button that you see right there. Of course, it doesn't say pad editor, it says view. So we want to click on that view button so we can get started. All right, as I have stated earlier in the earlier video, I don't mess with set A because those are the default settings that come with Behringer and I use those in, in the live setup. But I do use set B and set C. So we're going to be setting up set B or group B and set C. Now what I have here is what we're going to be uh, changing or setting up on the rotary knobs. The first rotary knob on set B will be our click on and off. You just turn it to turn your metronome or your click on and off. The second volume knob will be the, the volume control for the metronome. So you can turn it up and down. The third volume knob will be for the control room volume. If you use that, And the fourth volume knob is not being used. Got that labeled wrong. All right. And then our eight buttons will go as follow. The first top eight button, button number five will be return to zero. Button six will be our stop button. Button, button seven will be play and button eight will be record. On the next level, button nine will be uh, jump to the left marker. Button 10 will be jump to the right marker. Button 11 will be cycle. You can turn that on and off. And button 12 will arm record the selected track. So you will select the track and then you will hit that and it will arm that to, to, you know, get ready to record. So that's what group B or set B will have on it as far as its controls. All right, in group C, when you push the set C button or group C, these are the controls for it. The top four rotary knobs are not assigned yet. Um, you can assign those if you find a need for those. I have not yet found a, a need for it yet. All right, but we are using the eight buttons in group C. The numbers are the same, but it's group C. So uh, button C5 is to turn on read automation for the selected track. So if you select a track and hit button five on the group C, it'll turn on the read automation. Button six um, will turn on the write automation, allow you, allowing you to write automation. Button seven lets you monitor the selected track. And button eight opens up the selected track so that you can do your plugins and things of that nature. Button nine allows you to go from track to track. So when you hit button nine, you, you will go to the left. Your tracks will go to the left one by one button 10, your tracks will go. You will be selecting tracks to the right one by one 11 button 11 C 11 will open up the instrument. So if you have an instrument track selected, button C11 will open that instrument up. That's cool. And the last button, C12, um, I made it an undo button. I couldn't figure out what I wanted to, wanted to do with it. So I made it an undo button. So if you do an edit, you can pop that button. If you're on the, um, on, on the C tab, you can pop that button. It'll undo the last thing you just did. All right, so on to the next part. 
All right, this is where the programming of the Behringer will take place. Here I have a list of settings for each of the settings for each of these knobs and each of these buttons. I'm going to copy and paste this down into the description and I'll probably make a link to a PDF file as well um, in the description. But basically uh, when you are viewing the assign buttons, you, when you're viewing the assign buttons, you're going to go to set B and you're just going to go down the line and you're going to set the settings based on this layout right here. And I'll let you look at that for a minute. Um, and I'm going to show you what that looks like on the screen. And then we'll come back to this. Uh, I guess we come back to this. It's not hard. It's not very difficult at all. If you set it up like this, once you load the template, boom, everything should be ready, rock, you know, ready to rock and roll from that point on. As you can see right here on the screen, this is what the view looks like. Um, I've used the page select button and I selected set B. Um, both set B and set C will look exactly the same. So you're going to use your encoder knobs below each of these columns and you, you will select encoder one, set it to MIDI. In the second column, set it to control change in the third column. Put it on channel five. This is very important. Put it on channel five in the fourth column or the third column, I guess, and set the value to one in the last column. And so based on that list, you're just going to go down from encoder one all the way down to button 12, and you're going to set the settings in the template. All right, and this is set C, same layout. The only difference in this one is you're going to set that third column to channel six. So what I did was I made sure that the value number matches the number uh, of the selected control. So encoder one, of course, the value is one and button 12, the value is 12. The difference is going to be the second third and fourth column. Yeah, it is five columns. Okay. <laughs> so the second, third and, and fourth column is where the, the biggest change is at. So basically set B will be on channel five and set C is on channel six. The numbering in that last column, the value column is the same for both. And there, of course, the difference is going to be in whether it's MIDI um, push button or just it just depends so follow the template um, and set these accordingly and then once you load the template in Cubase boom everything will be where it needs to be so this will be available um, should be available now at producerroderick.com and um, just a nominal fee a little 490 495 fee just for me taking the time out and putting this all together and making it uh, available and showing you what you need to do. Also in the next video, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull up an old session, something that's got some juice on it, a lot of tracks on it. And we're going to watch this thing, do what it do. You know, I did a, I did a recording session this past week using this template. And I was like, yo, <laughs> this is what I really been wanting. And so, yeah, I want to know your experiences with it too. Those of you that downloaded. Also, um, a guy owns the Midas M32 and he tried it and he said it worked. So I don't, you know. So I want to I want to know from you guys that have downloaded the beta version and and now downloading this full version um what you think and what you like about it. This video and the other videos I think I need to make a video on how to program and I know I did it in the last video, but I'm going to make a video on how to program this or any controller because I have a M audio code 61 and it's got, it's got faders, eight, nine faders and about eight buttons. I mean, eight rotary knobs on it. So I may be programming it. It also has play, stop, rewind. So I may be programming it as well. I think that would be cool. So I'm going to show you guys 
in Cubase. I'm using Cubase Pro 11, but I think this works all the way down to probably nine or eight. I'm going to be showing you guys how to go into Cubase and how to get Cubase to learn any controller that you want to use to control Cubase. All right. Thank you guys. Listen, subscribe, like, follow, share so that other people can get access to this and they can enjoy this as well. All right. Talk to you guys in a minute. Oh yeah. I almost forgot. Someone wanted to see the settings that I had, um, the MIDI settings under setup. This is what I have under setup under the remote tab. I have generic CC checked card MIDI. If you notice the remote button is disabled because I really don't need it. Um, and then on the right hand side, I have card MIDI. I have fader channel pan and channel mute checked it on both sides. All right. So I hope that helps again, like share subscribe and I'll see you guys with the next video.